welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Shelley Brown, president and CEO of the State Theater Center for the Arts. She has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Shelley, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. So theater, live theater, live performance, talk about the State Theater for the Arts and the importance of live performance today in a day where everybody has this. Well, how about it? That's the biggest issue we're facing. Um, not only a culture that's re that revolves around technology, but a population that won't turn it off even it, with something as what may seem as trivial as not turning it off during a performance. That's become one of our big issues, believe it or not. But um, yeah, the importance of live performance. That's uh, in our world today. This, first of all, the State Theater is in its 93rd consec consecutive season of performance in Easton, Pennsylvania, in historic Easton. And it's a gorgeous building. It, it's one of about 100 in the country that have been completely refurbished. It's, I mean, it's amazing, gorgeous, all the good things. Also, we have wonderful infrastructure in our building that uh, enables us to house the largest Broadway productions, the most fabulous shows, you know, a great big elevator from the roof can load in all these great Broadway shows. So we can bring Broadway, we can bring major headliner acts to the It's really the highest quality it is. Of, of performance. You also have accessibility to, uh, to uh, great markets mm -hmm. and great performance performers uh, with the proximity to New York and Philadelphia and, and, and those places. So locationally, you're very well set up you, and, and um, you also have the, the community here to support it. However, there is just a challenge with theater today all across the nation because of these shifting cultural norms. Well, and we have two challenges. Uh, more than two, but two major challenges. One is that when I, when I came to the theater almost 30 years ago, there were three venues promoting, presenting shows. We're presenting theater. We don't have props and actors. We bring in shows and we present them. Now there are 25 venues who are all competing for the same acts. Right. That's brutal. Um, that's number one. <laughs> the second challenge is the fight against inertia. Mm -hmm. and technology uh, to convince people that they need to get off the couch and go to a performance, live performance, back to your initial point about live performance. Um, there's nothing like live performance. Uh, if people have not experienced that, and we're now seeing generations that have, a generation that's grown up without necessarily having gone to a theater. You right. know, young people that think of theater is a, a multiplex Right. at the mall, um, you know, a, the real theater experience that many of us sh had, you know, maybe it only happened once or twice, but your, your parents or your grandparents took you to a theater and you saw a big show and it was a big deal. You know, that's something that uh, many people have not experienced and don't think they have room for right now. I think people need to have room for it because I think it's filling a, um, a gap in society today. I think it's fellowship to be together and experience something wonderful together. When people come into the theater right now, when, they, when they're coming into your space, what do they experience from the, from the uh, point of waiting in line to buying the ticket to walking in the lobby? What do they experience? Okay, one of the experiences they have now that is fairly new for us is that they can order a ticket on that phone and, and the whole transaction takes place that way and they can print their tickets at home. I fought it almost, you know, because if you call our box office or you go online, you're beginning a different sort of experience right. with our customer service. But that's okay. If that's the way you got your ticket, getting you there is, is the issue. Um, when patrons come to our theater, they come to downtown Easton, <clears throat> where the issue when I went there decades ago was where are we going to park the car? Right. It's still the major issue with everyone. Where are we going to park the car? So we have parking garages in Easton. When I first came to the theater, as I said, decades ago, we hired a trolley to, mm -hmm. to sort of circle the decks. So we have this trolley. We still have it. We have our own block watch. It's the only one in the country, a theater block watch, uh, that is on the corner saying, welcome to Easton. Are you going to the show? That's the way you go. Are you going to the restaurant? That's the way you go. Or people can ride the little trolley right to the door where our security people, our ushers, our house managers, everyone greets them warmly. People are welcomed in if they have... Um, 
some a special need, a wheelchair, a walker, whatever, they're taken care of, they're ushered in, they come into this gorgeous building. So this is the idea of patron services mm -hmm. writ large, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's making sure people get parking, it's, 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 um, it's being on the block, it's being able to uh, take the trolley, mm -hmm. and you're entering into the experience from the moment you purchase your ticket, maybe it's online or maybe it's at the box office, but you're entering into this interaction with, two, with your with your theater. Yeah, and the two first impressions is, are, are people in the box office, mm -hmm. if in fact they are called or someone comes to the window and it's not an online transaction, and are ushers. Right. They're the face, they're the people that begin the experience that evening. And so then you're ushered to your seat. Of course, you can get something to eat or drink or whatever. And, and then uh, I began years ago going out and doing a curtain speech before every show, which was largely, is largely to thank the audience for coming and to thank the sponsors for the mm -hmm. evening. Um, but, you know, and so it, it's, it's, it's a warm welcome, you know, so glad you're here and, and all that. And people miss it. It, it. it makes me smile sometimes that if, if there isn't a curtain speech some night, you know, they'll be like, where were you? And I think, boy, you know, they're not saying, oh, I didn't have to listen to the <laughs> commercial, you know. So, um, but then, of course, there's the show. And um, what that moment we, you and I were talking about, and it doesn't happen every time. Um, I, I always called it that thing that happens. Mm -hmm. I was told years in by someone who actually studied theater that it's called the kinetic transference of energy mm -hmm. from the stage to the audience and mm -hmm. back again. It's the magic of people all being on the same page at the same time, right. laughing at the same time, crying at the same time, this being maybe a little bit off their seats in the silence, mm -hmm. waiting for the next thing to happen. Um, people come in, they don't know each other, by intermission, they're talking a little bit in their seats about how great that was, wasn't that, this is cool, you know. And then by the end of the show, they're walking out together, 1,500 people are walking out onto the streets together, and the mood is just better. And um, because people come to theater for a lot of different reasons. Some people come because they're following an artist, they're a fan. Some people come because they say, oh, I always wanted to see that show or maybe they're gifted the tickets, or they're celebrating something, an anniversary, a birthday, or they're coming because they have a life that's full of pain and trouble, and they're coming to be somewhere else, to get out of their head. And, but the key, and I've learned this over the years, is we, are create, we have a world right now where you don't have to be around other people. Right. You can shop. You can, in my early days of work, you know, I went to the, I'm pointing at your phone. I went to the library to get background information on people that right. I was working with or, or interviewing in, or something. Now you, you have the wisdom of everything in your palm. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to deal with people. People tell me all the time, I miss my com the community of the old days, but we're doing everything to end it. Right. And I mean, Unfortunately, I mean, church attendance is down. We, we have a fellowship in our audience. So how does that change the actual way in which you think about theater? You're, you have a, a venue, you bring performers in. Um, how does that actually change this whole idea of your, your theater is not only a theater, a, a vehicle for performance, it's also a vehicle for community. Mm -hmm which people sorely, sorely need. Um, how, does that, how does that affect your decisions, for example, of what uh, 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 shows to put on? Okay, well, we're a nonprofit. When I first got there, uh, we programmed headliner artists. Right. The Moody Blues, you know, uh, uh, Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons. I mean, <clears throat> big names, the Beach Boys. Right. And the community came to see them because they didn't have a lot of other places to see them. Right. Now I'm in a bidding war for those artists. This is kind of behind the curtain, but it's right. relevant to, obviously, to what you're... So in the beginning, if I could figure out a way, if I, could, if I believed that the community would pay the ticket price that was, that was created from what the fee was going to be, mm -hmm. if I thought we could sell the tickets, I could usually get the artists. Right. Now I'm in a bidding war where I can't possibly afford these artists anymore. Right. I can't. So I have to figure out another hole. Now, what will people come to see when there's so much more competition? There's so much going on in the Lehigh Valley. We are blessed, but we also don't have enough people to support everything. Right. And so now it's figuring out how to, uh, how to sell it 
make it enticing enough that people will want to come to see it. I had a rule when I got there, if I can't explain it in 10 seconds, it's not going to sell. It's still true. So you um, have 100 shows per season? About. It can um, vary. How do you uh, talk a little bit about your mix? Broadway. We have about seven Broadways this year, you know, and some are multiple performances. We do um, a lot of, we just, what, I mean, it can be, it's one thing we have never been able to really sell successfully is a straight play, non-musical. Everything's either music or comedy, although that's getting challenging, comedians. Mm -hmm. um, there's controversy everywhere you look, you know, I mean, in an audience tells you by not buying tickets what they don't want to see. <laughs> but um, it's, it's all pop, and it's much more pop oriented mm -hmm. than classical is, okay. is what I would tell you. Um, there's dance, not much. The Nutcracker's about the only dance that's really a blockbuster. Uh, you know, so it's finding that, that spot that is um, understandable enough for people, but is also excellent. You know, it has to be an excellent production. I mean, we don't we don't put on things that are inex maybe inexpensive and not that great. There's a caliber right. our stage calls for. You know, you can't just put anybody on a big stage. You can't. So we're it's a it's a really interesting balance of trying to get the very best that's marketable, easily recognized. It may be new. Something may be new and great, and we have to get out there and say, you have to come to this. You know, and then you sell the hell out of it. We sell the hell out of it. Shelley Brown, thank you so much for sharing the work. My pleasure. Of the State Theater Center for the Arts um, here in, in the Lehigh Valley. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for having me.